So I'm going to hang out. If you have questions, feel free to type those in. Um, what do you think makes Global Roots really unique? Um, it's a great question. I think the you know, what jumps out to me from leading so many of these programs is the way that we incorporate so many different groups of people into the program, whether it's our in-country staff, our host communities, our students, the parents, the leaders, um, former students who may send messages or gifts to their home, home state families. Um, you know, we, we include our, you know, our travel agent, uh, the people that support us around the office or, you know, all part of the family. And I think that's why people come away from these experiences feeling like they're really part um, of something, uh, of an organization that's special. And while you'll see people decades later sending their kids to go on Global Roots programs or wearing their old Global Roots t-shirt, I think it's just, it's a really inclusive community that, um, you know, where people can find um, just sort of the, the common values and threads that, that become so important to us through our through our time with Global Roots. So that's something, I mean, it's had an enormous impact on my own life um, as a leader um, and now as the director, um, has totally shaped my philosophy and you know, what I care about, what I'm passionate about. So I think that's, that's what makes it really unique in my, in my opinion. A great question, homestay, yeah. So selecting homestays, um, three, we use a three layer process uh, for doing this. Um, you know, not everybody's interested in a homestay, but I think people that do participate in a homestay will say it was the, um, you know, the most meaningful part of their experience or maybe their entire time in high school. Um, so first off, we have in-country staff, most of whom have been working with Global Roots for two or three decades. Um, they have been setting up these homestays year after year, uh, and they know exactly what we're looking for. They know our safety policies, our risk management policies. Um, <clears throat> and so the first thing they do is they find a community that is really looking um, to complete a project, maybe it's building a new classroom or they need a community kitchen or a health center. Um, <clears throat> and it also has a relationship with our in-country staff who can go visit, um, visit the community, and then visit all the families and go over our expectations, our rules, our safety policies. Um, examples of those include that there are no overnight guests or no one's staying in the home that, um, that is unexpected, that there's no alcohol consumed in the house during the duration of the homestay. Um, that there's a private place for students to sleep, that there's private places for students to go to the bathroom and shower, uh, and also that it's just a really warm and loving environment. We want a place where, um, you know, that it's really clear that families are, are seeking to host students because they also want to have that cross-cultural experience. They want to meet and host someone from another part of the world. Um, and it's something that's so wonderful about traveling that many of us experience is just the, the warmth and hospitality um, of people across the world is just you know, totally eye-opening and game-changing for, you know, for many travelers. So we're really looking, um, you know, just for that, that combination of, of attributes that are going to provide a fantastic experience. So that's the first le level. Our in-country staff know this so well. But then we also send one of our staff members, one of the leaders for the program, about a week early. They go for the second round. They visit with all the families. They eat with the families. They spend time there. They meet everyone. Um, they go over the rules and regulations and expectations again. And then from that, they're going to select um, the group of families that we that are going to be the best fit for our students. Um, and then the third level is really homestay matching. So we work really hard um, pairing students in ways that they're going to have a really successful homestay experience. And our leaders are checking with students every single day. They're visiting um, homestays in the evenings just to make sure that everything is going as planned, that if there's anything that's difficult or challenging or difficult to communicate, um, that leaders can step in to support in that process. So those are the three um, different levels to the way that we select and support homestay families. How do parents contact us when we're on the trip? Um, great question. So parents, um, you have the scheduled calls home. That's the, the main way that, that parents communicate with students on the program. Um, you know, it's very similar to the summer camp. On summer camps, you have zero calls home. You can write letters. Um, so a lot of times students that have been to camp or been away are used to that. Um, but, you know, the, we keep them informed. We send um, email updates to families all the time, and the blog is a great resource. If you want to go check out the blog, um, you can see our blog posts from last year that include updates in the program. Um, and that's, that's the main way that we keep parents informed. Um, you may be surprised that some parents are also, you know, excited to have, um, like, some space in the summer and give their students space to grow and learn a little bit more independently. So we have some some parents that are really eager to get updates all the time and hear what's going on. And we have some parents that are, you know, playing it cool. They're going on their own trips. 
um, you know, to South America or Europe or going on a backpacking expedition. Um, so there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a huge variety in the way parents want to be in contact, but we, we, we feel very strongly that it's really important for parents to know that they're informed, that their students are being taken care of. And that's one of the reasons we have such a small um, total number of students that will um, administer or accept it on summers. We want to know where every student is and how they're doing so that uh, if a parent calls unexpectedly, we can we have that information at the tip of our tongues. Uh, another good question about leaders. Um, yeah, so our leaders, the best part of every single program, in my opinion, uh, maybe I'm biased because I was a leader for so many years, but it's such a unique um, role model for students. You know, our, our, our leaders are incredibly inspiring, energetic. Um, many of them have been through programs themselves when they were younger. Um, generally have a ton of in-country experience. Um, great facilitators, so they know how to facilitate activities, to facilitate conversations. Uh, and really deeply rooted in the experiential education learning cycle, which is essential to being able to facilitate a really dynamic program. Um, uh, most are from the United States. We do have in-country staff that we hire as well for programs, um, but most are from the United States. Um, you know, runs the game at a lot of the Peace Corps in, in their country um, that they're leading in or speak the language. So, you know, we usually look for people that have uh you know some serious commitment to that region and can really elevate the learning of the program so it's a yeah, big i would say global roots leaders are, are so much more than you know a, another program might have sort of like chaperones or guides um our, our, our leaders are so much more dynamic and experienced and contribute so much more to the experience than i than, than i've seen in, in, in some other programs i've been a part of well i think that we are probably good for the evening. Uh, I'm super impressed that a bunch of people have stuck around. Um, but you can get in touch. Everyone knows that I'm at globalroots.org. If you need to be in touch, you can reach me there. Um, and I hope everyone has a, um, a beautiful evening. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon.